Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is Monday morning, 20th of January, a special day, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend here, uh, wrapping up. A lot of folks say, why do you say The Real Captain Kirk? Because I'm dating myself, because some 30 years ago I was The Real Captain Kirk uh, and was blessed to work with uh, briefly with this general here and uh, got to think differently, is what we like to say here. And uh, for that imposter on TV, Shatner, I have your chair. It's in our office. So, uh, again, if you're going to do anything in life, you better have fun at what you're doing. We've got a lot to talk about here today, but we're going to start off at kind of explaining why the winner's doing what the winner's doing. Um, not overly unexpected here with the way the pattern's shake, shaking up here, but uh, again, these are the ocean temperatures. So wherever you ever have warm waters, those greens and yellows, uh, you're more likely to probably have high pressure. And so what you see here is that blob uh, is really kind of displaced. It's actually more in the north central Pacific, but it's well off the uh, Alaska coast, well off of California. It's again north of Hawaii. So what that does, you got a ridge there, and that uh, in part you're going to have a downstream trough, but that downstream trough is probably a little uh, more toward Alaska and northwest Canada, uh, and then maybe a little blip into the Dakotas. And then you got a big Bermuda High that's been anchored out in the uh, Atlantic. So the net net has kind of kept the cold air locked up in Alaska, coldest in 20 years so far this winter. Northwest Canada, coldest in six years. North Dakota, a little bit of that cold air has bled, bled down into the U.S., uh, lower 48. North Dakota, coldest in three years. Greenland, coldest in eight. So really it's been uh, bottled up in the northern part of the of the Arctic Circle region here. Uh, and again, probably because these dueling high pressures just have not allowed those intrusions to come in. The other factor is probably, again, this polar vortex. If you look at how symmetrical this thing is, it's uh, crazy here. Uh, we did see here right now, you see that little tiny blip of uh, the polar vortex moved in here. So that's why we did have a really cold snap here uh, with the Martin Luther King Jr. period here across the country. Um, but again, we'll talk about that here in a second. But this polar vortex has been too symmetrical right over the North Pole. And uh, what you need to see is a lot of little perturbations breaking off of this thing and a little more wobble to this. And uh, seeing some of that, uh, unfortunately, it's lifting out. So as the polar vortex comes in, it lifts out. Uh, you tend to get uh, quite a bit uh, warmer behind that. If we look at these uh, November through January national trends across the U.S. versus average, uh, the bars are the deviation from average on a national scale. So really, really cold at the beginning of November. Had a couple little cold snaps in uh, early December, mid-December, then right before Christmas. And then now we've been in a pretty long, pro prolonged stretch of uh, milder year-on-year -year temperatures up until here this past weekend. So again, the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend, we have those three bars down uh, below normal. Um, this might actually, today, might actually be the coldest day of winter. We'll see here. We think there'll be another pretty major cold snap in uh, early mid-Feb, more mid-Feb. Uh, but uh, in any event, this coldest uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday period in 12 years, fourth colds in 35 years, so it is pretty cold, uh, again, with this blast across the country. Our retail clients like to look at these trends year over year for the U.S. on a, on a U.S. scale. Uh, again, so the blue bar is colder year over year and red bar is warmer year over year, but what you notice here is the warmer trends here for the next couple weeks. Um, both versus average and versus normal. Looking at snow cover here this morning, uh, a tad above average. 41% uh, of us have snow on the ground. We actually have snow outside our studios here. Uh, so we're slightly above average, uh, seventh most in 17 years. Average would be about 39% of us with snow on the ground. So again, just a uptick, uh, but again, certainly down from last year and down from 16 and down from the big year in 08. If we look at this week overall, the last full week of uh, January, um, on the warm side again so we're starting out very very cold obviously uh, here in the east uh, but then a bigger warm-up as we get toward uh, the latter part of the week overall we'd say the nation's 4.6 degrees warmer than last year 16th warmest in 35 years so above average on a national scale school spot cool spots actually down in the southeast uh, and they haven't been overly cool this year but uh, again a cool spot for them um, drier than last year about average rainfall across the country wet spots in the pacific northwest maybe again the northeast Snowfall down this week is expected to be 45% less than last year and a, and a tad below average. We'll look through the six-day snowfall maps here. Again, this is uh, today, uh, ending at 7 o'clock tonight, and then uh, here tomorrow, Tuesday, a system in the Rockies. A little bit of light snow in the, um, the plains, kind of where it's been this year, uh, and then a little bit lingering into the Great Lakes. Uh, we'll have to watch this maybe as it gets. If you got one more good chance of snow here, uh, here in January, it's going to be maybe this weekend. TBD on this, uh, but again, there's definitely a potential for something on Saturday. It's very, very borderline with the temperatures as we speak, but uh, we'll have to see. So Saturday, Sunday is the time to watch uh, in the east. Uh, again, so if you're in the New York City area right now, it looks like a rain-snow mixy kind of thing, but um, we'll have to watch that again that weekend time frame for the next snowstorm. Run through these one more time here today, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, midweek. Uh, again, Plains, uh, Upper Midwest is going to be kind of the, actually the plain, Upper Midwest is the snowy spot. And then we'll have to again watch as we get into the into the Northeast. Looking at next week, uh, getting into early February here, and Groundhog Day is coming up here uh, uh, this weekend. 
uh, but 27 January through 2 February, uh, wettest in seven years, above average uh, precip. Uh, snowfall still down, though. It looks like it uh, down 50% versus last year, below average. We'll see about this. This may be a little bit overdone. Um, some of the operational models are, are much warmer than the ensemble models, but um, the net net it is, does look like as the polar vortex lifts out, you tend to get milder behind it because it takes all the cold air with it. Um, so we'll see about this maybe a tad overdone, but again, 11.3 degrees warmer than last year, so that's pretty epic. Fourth warmest in 35 years, much above average. So we'll see if that uh, that plays out to that extent. Um, the little one here, uh, the little Angelina Kirk, actually turned four. She's very excited about that. She's been talking about being four for for many months, as most most three year olds do, right? Um, she had her, she made her. She says, "Daddy, Daddy, you watched. No, no, Daddy, you watched." She made her own snowman, so I was not allowed to assist in the snowman. Snow girl, actually here, and she had very very long arms. Uh, little one was very proud of her sticks that she found so I'll let you watch her having fun here in our first three inches of snow outside 360 studios so with that folks have a great week and we'll be back here this time next week